I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Roy Kenny. I'm Mike Delicio. So earlier this summer, we um, I went from like zero to super excited when I've heard the announcement for 3,000 3, Scoundrels. Mm -hmm. I knew nothing about it. Mm -hmm. The announcement came out. There was the fact that it was from Unexpected Games yes. and Corey Kaneska, which mm -hmm. was exciting. One of the best covers I've ever seen. Terrific. Um, great artwork all around and a cool theme. Yep. Western, yeah. but also future tech coming back in the time. Yeah, a great premise. Yeah. And then connecting the cards. There's 3,000 scoundrels because there are 60 cards combined with 50 cards, which makes 3,000. So all that, mm -hmm. I was in. Mm -hmm. um, I liked the last unexpected game, Voices in My Head, and the first one was um, the, initiative. The, initiative. the Initiative, which I thought was fine. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, if there's one thing I learned from these games is that the unexpected games, he's pushing the envelope, right, he's yes. trying new things. Yep. Great. Definitely the case here, let's show you. In the game, the players are trying to steal saves from the depot, the estate, and the laboratory over here, as well as gain reputation down on this track. At the end of the game, you are going to add up the values on the saves you have stolen. For example, this one over here is worth five victory points to the uh, the ranking of your reputation, let's say I'm the yellow player, I've made it up here, that's four points. I add up these things to together and whoever has the highest score, of course, is the winner of the game. There's a couple of other minor things that'll give you points, but that's generally it. Now, the game will be played either over two or three days, and that means you can have two or three saves, with obviously the three save, three day game, being a little bit longer than the other one. We'll come back to the player boards here in one second. To finish setting up the game though, we need to create some scoundrels up here. And the way that works is you take one of these cards, which has a transparency in it inside the sleeve, and we are going to grab one of these and click them, basically join them together to create a character. That character now has two words that describe it. A stunning investor with some abilities and some cost down the side over here. So we would do that three times to set up the game, and then every time one of those is either purchased or discarded, then we will create another one and place it in the new spot, always sliding the cards over uh, to place the new one over in this spot here. So there we go, we've created a few different things, a funny researcher here, a clown, huh? and then we've got this, uh, cocky printer over here. All right, so there we go. Let me show you the general flow of the game. So every player has a player aid like this, and each round, each day, will have four actions taken per player. We'll go around and around with you taking one action, one time through this turn, until the players have taken four turns each, then it's the next day. And again, you can play two or three days in the game. So starting from the top over here, each player is going to, from their small deck of cards, and that looks like this, you have two special ability cards, which are optional, I'm not going to worry about these right now, but the rest of your cards are these. You have, as you can see here, two through six, an ace, and a zero as well. So you're going to shuffle these and you'll give yourself four. Four random ones, the rest of your deck you'll set aside. And then again, you've got your player board like so. So your turn is going to begin here with step one, the planning phase, in which you take one of these cards you've got, and you are going to assign it to one of these spots down here and take the corresponding action. Now you can bluff, uh, but if players decide you are bluffing, they could send one of their henchmen, which are these tokens here, they can place that on the card you've played, and if indeed they are correct, they will be gaining reputation and you're going to be losing uh, losing some reputation. If they are wrong and you were not bluffing, this character goes up here to the sheriff's office and they'll have to earn that person back or buy them out, you know, bail them out. So that's how that works. The different actions down here are, and again this is step one of your turn, uh, the actions are, starting from over here, you can scout a safe and then you mark it. Scout means look at one of these, say this one, I look at it, I see the value, I put it back, 
and then I mark that. Now marking it means taking one of my tokens, of which I have a variety of values, and putting that token on it. And again, I could be lying or telling the truth. If I am lying, this card will simply be worth a value printed on it. If I am telling the truth, and this is marked with, uh, say, a 6 in this case, because that's what the card was, a 6, then whoever takes this, this card will be worth plus 1 point. So this is actually worth 7 to anyone who takes it. It doesn't matter if I'm the one who marked it. It'll be worth 7. So the players have to, again, decide, am I bluffing? Am I telling the truth? Is this, does this have a 6 on it because I want you to take it? Because it's possibly this garbage 2 card? Or is it actually the 6? And I'm going to come around and pick it up and it'll be worth 7 points instead, right? So that's what marking it will do, and that's the ace and the two will both do that ability. Then we've got over here a three will gain me three bucks, the four will gain me four bucks, and again the money is to buy scoundrels, and then the five will let me steal a safe. Just pick one of these out here, take it. I can have only one during the first day, I could have up to two during the second day. And I could take more than two, I just have to put some back. Whatever I don't want, I put back out here in the display. All right? Uh, and then over here is a spot for the six. The six doesn't do inherently anything. Usually, it's triggered, it's triggering some of these characters out here. The six is the number that will most frequently show up on these scoundrels, all right? And then there's also, as you saw, the uh, zero, which does nothing, and you have to bluff with the zero. You'll just put it anywhere you want and say that's the card you've got and do that ability. So that's the very first thing is planning is playing the card face down. Step two is using abilities. Uh, and the abilities are these abilities plus any scoundrel that matches. So say I've already previously purchased the funny researcher here and I've put it in any one of these spots here. Let's say I put it right there. Well, when I play a three, I can now also trigger this ability that says gain two bucks for each safe you have stolen, gain an additional one dollar. All right, so I would trigger this and this. Uh, and then the next step would be to hire a scoundrel or use the sheriff's office. So hiring a scoundrel just means paying for one of these people. The cost is here down the side, sometimes very expensive, sometimes uh, free. This one doesn't show any, uh, any dollar symbols. They get covered up sometimes by the two cards on top of one another. So you'll hire one of those, then we slide this over, and like I said, we create a new one, play it in there. And then the other option is just going here to the sheriff's office. If you do that, you discard the farthest, you slide everything over, you add a new one, so this is always filled. And then you can take one of these abilities, gain two bucks, bail someone out, or on the last day, you could just buy a safe, basically bribe the sheriff by giving them a bunch of money and taking a safe from out here. Once that's done, then we go to the next player, and once every player has taken four turns, that's the end of the day, we then check those uh, bluffs. If you sent out your henchman because you thought someone was bluffing, we'll check all those cards, and then we get ready for the next day. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Like I said, play two or three days, Check your uh, reputation, check the saves you've stolen, see who the winner is, and that person, of course, will walk away in triumph. I am not showing you many, many of these cards, many combinations, of course, and some new abilities, but that should give you an idea of what's happening in the game. Let's go ahead and go back up top. Okay, so first the theme. I, I want to talk about this because it's interesting and on, uh, I, I have mixed feelings on the theme. Yeah, I agree. The, hmm. the Cowboys and mixing the two things together to get a combo, mm -hmm. I love that. That's One of the fun. absolute best things in the box, I would mm -hmm. say, is the idea of creating people as you go. Right, right. Right, it's just funny. Like, you have an angry banker and a malicious gunslinger. Okay. okay. Right. And the way that the pictures work together, that's fun. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing with the safes feels very Western. Yes. Great. Why is the future thing even there? That, that part I don't funny. get at all. Right. And it's also the thing that is completely disconnected. I do feel like it does evoke that nice Western theme. I mean, you're looking at safes. You're maybe stealing them. You're doing little things. You're you're betting. You're literally playing poker cards. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like a poker mechanic, but right. it, it feels thematic to that. The the the. 
I completely ignore the the futuristic. Well, stuff. so does the game. That's though. what I'm that's saying. The that problem. Is, that's pretty you know what I mean? Yeah. Almost. There is a few cowboys near the bottom of the deck. There's yeah. a holographic and an right. android. So there's a small bit there. I like the western part, yeah, like yeah. I just said, but the sci-fi feels. Does it need to be there? You look at a safe and you find a cell phone. Do you think Whoa. maybe they ran out of there like, okay, we got the outlaw, we got the banker, what else do we need? Oh, we need a robot. Let's add the robot in there. I don't know. That sort of thing. But there's very few people who are futuristic like that. Right. Most of it's them extremely are very small. much like, right. you know, a, a dancer, an outlaw. Right, you know, right. Which makes a lot of sense in the for scope Western of things, name. though. In the scope of things, how much is that an issue? It doesn't matter. It's that. not. I'm right. just saying that it is something I mention, love but... that theme of yeah. cowboys going and finding futuristic tech. But the futuristic tech doesn't give you any abilities. I do find it to be an issue because it's the promise of something. You know what I mean? Thematically, the game is about these characters finding, breaking into saves and finding and ideally yeah. utilizing futuristic technology. That's an awesome theme that it might is. get me through the door. And then I sit down at the table, and it's just not there. Does the lack of that connection, thematic connection, impact the gameplay at all? Does it make it harder for you to remember rules? Does it take you out of the immersion? For me, I it doesn't. No, I, no. I ignore this, it. I thought I this was just it. a Western game. I didn't even realize right. there was a tech thing there until we sat down and like we're like, oh, there's these tech things, but it doesn't matter that much. Okay, I cool. Problems. I just played it as a Western the game. The same thing happened. I played it with my kids. We played through it, and when I was done, I was like, I thought there was future <laughs> stuff in here. Yeah. And it we feels, looked at those cards, and we had been looking at the whole game, but that the picture of the tech. Yeah. Didn't it's even like, register. Oh, yeah, they yeah. Didn't it was just a seven. Like it was right, just a you know. four. It's a little, again, to me, it's a little annoying, but it, it only becomes problematic when I feel like it hinders me from remembering. It's fine. I'm just, I want to tell people matter. because, yeah, again, yeah. that's how the game is being shown. Now, if yeah. you go into just straight Western, you'll love the theme. The gameplay is... Man, I'm all over the place with this gameplay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does so many things that I like. So I'll start with the thing I like the most, which is combining the characters. Right. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Although, I will say, of the 3,000 scoundrels in this game, I would say maybe 800 of them are particularly uninteresting. Gotcha. There are a lot of occasions where they show up and everyone at the table is like, ah, meh. Yeah. I don't like that card. That's okay, though. That's supposed to... I, I, I like that. I almost mm -hmm. enjoy the fact that because some are slightly worse, some will stand out. Right. If they're all fantastic, then none of them are fantastic. No, they're all I get okay. that. You know I get I mean? that, but sometimes... All three of them, I'm like, eh. And you wish you had that on your turn. That, I, that I, market cycles so quickly, though. I mean, it, it cycles there quickly. There were so many turns, yeah. though, when I had a pile of money, and I'd look at the characters, and I'm like, these characters all allow me to get more money, and they don't help me do the point of the game. I don't want any of these characters. And that's just the combination of how the cards come together, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, to that end, that leads me to my biggest problem with the game. Well, actually, I have two big problems with the game. Um, I'll get to that one in a second. But the one is... That reputation track, which is so fascinating to yeah. me and interesting and obviously very important, and it goes up to, a, what, 8, 9, 10? Something which like is, that, like, yeah. ridiculous. I've never seen it go that high, and that's the thing. So few of these outlaws work with reputation, and I wish more did. Right. Because that's interesting, mm -hmm. especially if there's an outlaw that gives you reputation every time a 4 is played. Right. Every time Roy plays a 4, suddenly that makes me calling him a liar more interesting. Yeah. If Roy says, I'm taking $3, I don't care if he's lying or not. That and, part of the game seems a more card interesting. In, yeah, unless there's a card in the market that you particularly might want, you want to maybe, but he's going to get that money anyway. So right. you can't really stop them necessarily. Right, so the lying yeah. aspect, which if you're wrong when you call someone a liar, you lose a person. But if you're right, they lose a point, mm -hmm. a reputation. There seems, it sh there should be more outlaws that have to do with reputation. There should be. Right. Because that, that reputation track is actually a big part of the game. So that's my one problem. The other problem is the game feels too small. Yes. Mm. I like a lot of aspects of this game. You were stealing three saves in the full, full game. You know? It's so ridiculous. And I saves. have a major issue with that. And the reputation is a few points, and there's a couple points on characters. That's it. Interesting. I, I, I have a very different feel. Really? I have a very, very different feel. I When I was playing this, I, as soon as I was done, I was thinking this is going to have the abyss problem. This game is going to have the abyss problem. This game is going to have people that come into it with expectations that are not going to be met, and they're going to be upset about that. And I get it 100%. I think this game is basically a filler. This is this is a filler plus game, a hundred percent. I don't disagree. This is a small card game in a not very big box, honestly. Right, right. People are going to come into this and they're going to expect 
a medium weight Euro game, and it could not be less. This is almost <sighs> a party filler game to me. I disagree I just, with that. I think I don't mind that it's small. But it's such an interesting idea, the, this combining two cards. It's such a clever, enjoyable, mm -hmm. addictive almost mm -hmm. idea. Looking for a game. The right. other stuff, the scoring, mm -hmm. is so incredibly pedestrian. I feel it's I, not just that it's small; it's boring. Right. Ooh, I, 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 I think that. I think there's so many things that I, I I guess I did have expectations for this, but there's so many cool ideas in this that I just felt like I wish they were bigger. I wish you got more safes, were able to manipulate that stuff more. I wish you were able to do a lot of different things with the game. The fact that you're only getting two of those, and once you got them, you're just kind of stuck with them. If I randomly stole a safe, being like, I hope this is the right one. I have 50/50 shot. Oh, I got the two instead of the seven. You're out of the game, like mm -hmm. out of the game. Well, I I I don't agree on that. But, but if someone but else already took the seven, you're only allowed to steal safes like twice in a, in a game, game, in a short game, three times in a long game, and seven to two is such a huge swing sort of thing. And the fact that like half the time you're gonna have to lie about stealing a safe. So if somebody does steal a safe, you have a 50-50 chance of being like, oh, you're lying. Well, they're because... arguing and saying, uh, yeah. Well, that's I guess. That doesn't bother me as much. I like that idea. It just feels, it just like, feels like I agree that you should the, have like six the saves. The bluffing at the end of the game. felt like it should be more impactful, and and this, the being able to manipulate how these safes work felt like it should have been more impactful. I really love the the clear card thing and doing all that stuff, but almost all of those were all just about gaining money. And it's like I can gain more of those guys, which aren't helping me get more safes and aren't helping me get more points. So what's the point of any of these? But characters? You don't need to gain that many saves, like you said. You only gain two. Right, but if some of these like characters basically, like, oh, I took a three. Later on, I look at oh, it's a four. I wonder which one I'll put back. If I have a ton of money and all these characters out here are just helping me manipulate my money more, and it's like this one isn't helping me get more points, this one isn't helping me get more reputation, this one isn't helping me get more safes, then it's kind of like, I guess I take one of my guys You're back. You're not so necessarily I can call only level. getting two or three safes. I mean, you can replace safes you have. Right. There are a lot of cards that allow but you to steal saves. Somebody, so you don't have to wait on your five. After the first round of the game, I knew I had lost the game because I knew what you guys basically I'm not had. convinced I think that's on pretty that. situational, honestly. I, but my problem is there's too little scoring that luck matters on the positive side. Yeah. So I, like, I'd be like, seven. I just randomly stole a save. I didn't have to work for that. Mm -hmm. And there's no actually negative repercussions, and I'm now feeling pretty solid. Yeah, in the, in if the you get a seven game. in the first round, you're in good shape. There's no question. Right. So there's a lot of people shooting in that blue area mm -hmm. because you have one a one out of five. Right. Why not try to steal safe in your first turn? Sure. Yeah, I think it's not about looking at and not looking at enough saves. I agree with you that there are some cycling, mm -hmm. but you only keep two. I don't two like that three, the scoring. Yeah. The points come from such small things, right? Yeah, and you the could, scope of the characters, their abilities, feels fun, larger, yeah, yeah. and it all boils down to four plus seven. Yeah, you could theoretically oh. get what a max of five on your scoundrels from your board if every one of those. You yeah, have. so the max points in this yeah. game: five for your scoundrels, <laughs> ten for your reputation. Yeah. Okay, so That's let's say five happen. for reputation, right. and then the two get the. Let's say you're playing a three safe game, you get a seven six five. Right, and they could all have that token on them, they which could, would yeah. make it an eight seven six. Yeah, that'd be like. And there might max. be some characters that have special sure. scoring. I don't know, right. you know, like There's above and beyond. Yeah, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a small game, and that's okay. Like mm -hmm. you said, coupled with some of the really bright ideas in here, and some right. of the yeah. just you know clever fun the mm -hmm. thematically, the the artwork on the people, the right. fact that They're you bring these really two good. things together, and it's like. Kind of like Small World back when it first came out gave mm. you that feeling of like, wow, there's so many races because you're combining two things. It just puts a big smile on my face. And then at the end, you're like, that's what you did with this? That's where you went. That was where you got to and thought, this is now done. It feels mm. so disappointing. Hmm. Interesting. But that's okay. the end game of this of this production, you know? Hmm. I don't know the order in which things were designed, discovered, but gosh, it's like a fantastic mechanism looking for a game. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll start here. My final rating on this is a 6.5 because it's so close for me. It's so close to something that I really want to play. I've played it several times, and each time I feel like there's a little bit less. Now, you mentioned that it's a small game, mm -hmm. and be that as it may, 
it feels like it shouldn't be to me. It feels like I want to play a two-hour version of this, maybe 90 minutes or whatever, but because when you play the scoundrels, I'm like, ooh, when I play a six, the scoundrel goes off. Ooh, a cool combo that I will do once, maybe twice. That's my concern with this game. It offers all these cool things, these combinations that barely happen. The bluffing is feels like a cool idea, but it's almost always me just saying, I guess you're bluffing. I don't have any real information, unless of course you have something that makes all your cards go off. Right. Well then you might be lying. But you might not be. And you could say, well remember the cards I played in round one, but you don't see all those cards played sure. anyway. I just felt the bluffing felt a little lackluster. Mm -hmm. But it's a cool idea. The comboing yeah. of the cards, cool idea. The or I like everything about the game, and I don't even hate playing the game. It's just that when I'm done, I feel unsatisfied. It's like eating a whole bag of Lay's potato chips. <laughs> you know, each bite is fine. When I'm done, I'm like, ah, oh, I just ate a whole bag of potato chips. That's kind of how I feel. Um, I Again, I applaud Corey and the, the mm -hmm. company. They keep trying new interesting things. It's really wild stuff, yeah. I just wish this... The game isn't good enough for me beyond the cool ideas. What about you? I'm giving it a six, so I'm slightly lower than you. Um, yeah, for me, it just it showed up with all the necessary requirements, and it couldn't quite close the deal. You know, that's mm. which I've said already a few different ways. So yeah, that's that's. I would love to see some of the ideas in here re-implemented into a bigger game. Maybe an expansion to this would help me feel less um, unfulfilled. With with the end product, but yeah, I kind of I, I'd be happy to play it. I, I just don't think I'll remember the sessions as particularly memorable. It'll just be like, oh, your saves were better. Your your yeah, your four plus five plus three. That's better than my whatever. Yeah, six. I'm gonna go with a uh, 5.5. I do the, really like some of the mechanisms in this. I love the card play. I just feel like it could have been, to me, it just ended up coming out lackluster. A lot of the stuff was just kind of like, oh, get money, get this and that. And I wish there was a little bit more things to mix things up. Like, oh, I trigger this and now I'm stealing your safe here, but I don't get to look at it or something crazy to mix things up and make it more exciting. More of the combos that you can do in the game would have been even cooler. And just the fact that the point spread was just so tight and you had very, unless you got the right characters, you had very few times you can even take safes. It was just kind of like, hmm, wow, I don't have a lot of decision space, even though you would feel like you should in this kind of game. Um, but yeah, 5.5 for me. Yeah, I'm coming in higher. I'm at a 7.5. 7 I think that this game is one that fills a nice niche. It's fast. Super fast turn, snappy. I can teach it really easily. Um, you know, is it anything more than a little more than a filler no but I, i'm okay with that i guess sure. Man, i don't want to play this game for 90 minutes i'm sorry i don't i i think it's a perfect length for what it is a little bit of bluffing maybe going to be group dependent i don't know that i'd want to play this at a group of people that were silently head down i mean it's not you yeah. know you have to have a little bit of uh, fun and you know oh, what are you thinking eh, i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna i'm gonna call your bluff type of a thing is it terribly impactful the bluffing no but the card system is cool, the turns are quick, it's simple to teach, and it's, I don't know, I feel like it is a nice little, it, it's different, you know, it's different and works for me. Seven and a half. All right, well, there, there you go, go folks. 3,000 scoundrels, either way, I tell you what, no matter what, the next game that comes from Unexpected Games, mm. I'm in on. Yeah, I'll take because a Because I like their ideas a I, lot. I'd rather have the big swing, yeah. Right, right, yeah. for sure. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Roy Henning. I'm Mike Delicio. Stick them up.